and welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, y'all get ready. I've got somebody that I've been following and I've been I've got a connection way back when. But this guy is an incredible leader. And I know we're going to learn some incredible things from him and be inspired. So you guys give it up for none other than Richard Wetcott. <laughs> Richard, can you hear him clapping for you? I, I can hear him, man. The crowd is roaring. We, be, we better do a two-minute pause just so we can get we better, hey, We'll let everybody simmer down before we get started. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love welcome, Gary. I so appreciate that. And it's funny that uh, I feel like we have this connection just like you shared, you know, growing up similarly. And I think we both spent our, our time in uh, – short time but feels like a long time in student housing so uh yeah we have and i've loved watching likewise just everything you're doing and love the show big fan and glad to be uh be on it with you oh uh, thank you so much sir and, and it's great that we're both student housing survivors you know so there's kind of like a a collective uh, support group that we're all a part of from uh, surviving it and then jumping into multifamily um it, it has just been an incredible adventure but Richard, I want to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Well, yeah, I'd love to. So uh, my name is Richard Wacott, like shared, and uh, I, you know, I, I live in Houston, Texas today and spent some time uh, uh, growing up in Oklahoma, uh, made my way to Texas as quickly as possible. So uh, don't hold it against me that I uh, grew up and spent some time there in Oklahoma. And uh, what, what I do for work is I work for Camden, a uh, um, multifamily uh, provider like you shared, and I support the Texas market, so Austin, Dallas, and uh, Houston. I get to spend my time uh, shoulder to shoulder with the teams in each of those cities and, and learning from all of them. So love what I do. I've been doing it 16 years. Uh, Camden's gracious, actually. They let me count a year gap where I did leave for a short while and came to my senses came back to the multi-family industry and back with Camden and uh, I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. So that's just a little, little brief snapshot of who I am. I love that. I love that. And one of the things, Richard, that really stands out that what you said, that uh, it, what makes you stand out as one of those leaders is you said you stand shoulder to shoulder with your team. And I, and I think that is indicative of a true inspiring leader because you're not out there like, you know, working above them, you're you're standing next to them, helping helping them be successful. And I think that just that small comment I picked up on really shows how connected you are and how supportive you are of your team. And that that proves why you're such a, a, a an inspiring leader. And that's one of the many reasons why I connected with you. Because I love to connect with inspiring leaders and peek behind the curtain to find out what inspires these inspiring leaders. And Richard, you sent me three topics that I absolutely love uh, that I can't wait to chat with you about. But what was really cool about your topic is you're like, okay, Gary, these are the things that inspire me both professionally and personally. And you'll find a lot of people, they, they, they separate those two things. They separate their personal and the professional and so you've got you're living almost two lives, but I love that you've connected these because it really does add value to your life overall. The first one you talked about, when I can see it, it's people. People inspire you. So Richard, share with us a little bit more about what that means to you. Why do why do people inspire you? Yeah, no, I'd love to. And I'm gonna before I talk about that, I just want to take it a step back on what you shared about you know, professional and personal goals or professional uh, inspiration. And I'll, I'll share, that probably wasn't always true. And early in my career, I felt like I had to be the career Richard. And then my personal life, I was, you know, operating much, much differently. And I quickly learned that that just doesn't work. You got to be your authentic self at work. And, and, you know, people often describe me as casually intense and used to describe me as just intense. And that's when I realized, hey, you gotta be your authentic self. And my style is very casual, uh, you know, not a lot of formality in me, but intensely focused on, you know, driving us forward and driving, uh, you know, to a higher level of, of success. So I just wanted to touch on that. It wasn't always true, but I just realized quickly, hey, this ain't gonna work unless I'm just my true self at work and, and who I really am. So, but, but, but people, man, it, that's, 
that's what it's all about. You know, I, obviously in my home life, inspired by my, you know, to do well for my wife and my son. I have an almost three-year-old in November. And uh, so yeah, so fun running around the house with him and learning from him too. And hey, I'm, I'm probably late to the party. I'm 40 with a three-year-old and I'm looking at all these guys that are in their you know, late 20s or maybe early 30s. I'm like, oh man, I better get in good shape to keep up with it. <laughs> so, uh, so, so that's a little bit about my home life, but you know, it works. We, obviously we're talking multifamily and I learned quickly, anyone can build a, a pretty impressive building. Anyone can, you know, out amenity each other. And really, by the end of the day, it's about the people you work with, the people that take care of our customers, our customers themselves. And if you can lean into that and get to know people, be authentic with them, hear what their concerns are, hear what their dreams are. I've just found that to be the recipe for success. And I just feel so incredibly fortunate that for some reason, Camden thinks that I should do more and more, and they've given me that opportunity. And at the end of the day, I'm like, this has nothing to do with anything I've done. I've just been the incredible fortune of surrounded with great people and listening to them, and getting out of their way to let them create all the magic. And every chance I get with the teams that I, have, you know, I work with and support, I just thank them because, again, it is it is not lip service. I am so so thankful. I get to do a job I love, but it's only because of all the efforts they do. Because at the end of the day, I don't really touch anything. It's I, so it, it is all about people to me. You know, friends, family, coworkers are all in the same bucket to me. I love all of them, adore them all, and uh, uh, together we're just more successful that way. I, and I I love that. And and Richard, a couple of things that stand out to me. What you said is. You know, you you de, you understood, or you you de decided to say, "Hey, listen, I got to bring my authentic self, both personal and professionally." And I think bringing your authentic self truly inspires other people. They can kind of a lot of people can pick up on when when you're not being authentic, and because you stand shoulder to shoulder with your team, with you know the people in your personal life, and you're learning from them and you're encouraging them, just you being there, that being that authentic you leader is inspiring enough to, to encourage other people to do more than they believe they can do on their own. And so, you know, I truly believe, you know, Richard, you're being incredibly humble um, and, and I respect that as a leader, but I know because you are one of those leaders that stand shoulder to shoulder, being authentic, that your team recognizes that and they're inspired by that. And so they're gonna do more for you, for Camden, you know, for each other, for the residents, you know, it's just a constant build. It's a snowball effect. And it's because you're there standing shoulder to shoulder, being authentic with them. And I, and I love to see that if people inspire you and it really does show in the success that that you have, that your team has, Camden has overall. I mean, you can't be a, a you know, a top rated best places to work without having, you know, a great leadership in place that it's inspiring the people to do amazing things. So that's that's fantastic. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, and saying that. Thank you. Yeah, Richard. So the the second thing you talked about, and this is the, you're speaking my language, process. Process inspires you, and so I want to I want you to unpack that a little bit. What does it mean for process to inspire you? Yeah. So uh, you know, I'm I'm a an, an avid learner. In fact. Uh, you know, just the other day, I was watching the guys take care. I have a small pool, an old pool that was, you know, need some work. And I saw the guys taking care of it. And I said, why am I not doing that? I'm capable. <laughs> I love to learn this stuff. So I just shared, hey, nothing against you guys, but I, I want to take this on for now. And and that's kind of what I, I really instill in those around me. And that's a really simple example. But in my personal life, I'm always digging in, trying to learn more, figure it out, and work through that process. And that's... That's what I bring to work as well and share with it. And a quote that people say, man, I'm like a broken record is don't focus on the scoreboard. It's so easy to do that at work, just looking at the scoreboard, but the scoreboard will come if you focus on the process and just being the best self, working through that stuff, the, the scoreboard works itself out. And again, this was a, I wish I could say I was always this way early on in my career. I'm sure you've been a strengths finder. You know, I have competitions in my top five. It might be my number one. And it used to be really unhealthy, but I was comparing myself to others. I wanted to outpace them, outbeat them, you know, get the bigger title, move forward. And 
someone thankfully early in my career pulled me aside and said, what are you doing, Richard? Let your work do the talking for you and lose all that ego. So that's what I try to share with the team. Hey, don't focus on the, the scoreboard. Let the work do the talking for you. Just focus on the process. Be a master of your craft. Just be the best you can be, the best version of you. Who cares what those are doing around you? And by you doing that, everyone's going to get better around you. So that's what I mean when I say process. Just avidly learning, digging into everything. Don't focus on the, the, the scoreboard and, you know, just let your work do the talking for you. Man, I, I, and I absolutely love that. And I think a couple of things that resonates with me is when you say don't focus on the scoreboard, for me, the scoreboard is the ego. And when you stop focusing on that and you start focusing and it's football season, so I'm going to get into some football analogies. But when you start focusing on the plays on the field or or developing those plays on the sideline and you're the coach and you're calling those plays in and, you, and you're practicing with your team and coaching them to do the things they need to do, that scoreboard's going to happen. Um, but when you when you look when you all you're looking at the is the scoreboard, your ego, you're not focusing on the plays that you got to take care of. And that's what makes the difference. And that's the process. Absolutely. But that, yeah. Absolutely. Hey, all the, all that all the success scoreboard that all happens in the, the after hours, the on the field, the study and the playbook, the, all of that is what what develops up there. But and it's tough, you know. So many people coming in to work with us now. They're younger, they they're ambitious, and I love that. I just want to harness it. But their immediate action is, I want to be on the top of that leaderboard. I want to be the one posting the biggest. Hey, don't don't focus on that because it'll come if you focus yeah. on the work. Stuff. So there you go. The process will create the scoreboard. I love no, that. Not. That is so good. All right, so so Richard, we're getting to that third one. This one's this one's interesting for me. A lot of people try and shy away from this topic, but you're like, man, head on. This this inspires me. Problems. Where in the world and why does problems in, <laughs> inspire you, Rich? You gotta let us know. Hey, I'm a sicko. I, I, there's no other way around it. I'm just a sicko. <laughs> I'm, I love it. I'm, I mean. I, maybe I'm a sucker for punishment, a glutton for punishment, I don't know, but if there's something broken or something that maybe isn't running optimally, that's what I want to jump into. It, You know, a quick death sentence for me career-wise, sit me at a desk and tell me, hey, everything's running smoothly, just, you know, you know, keep your eyes on it and keep it moving. I'm like, gonna be bored in two seconds. Like, that's just not, not me. And it's not, you know, it, it's not that I'm seeking out problems, but I just want to keep continually improving, looking for stuff that we can address, get better on. And, uh, you know, that's that's where I thrive. That's what I love. And, you know, sometimes it can drive my team crazy. And I have to, I have, to have them hold me accountable too. say, hey, Richard, not, there's no problem here. There's nothing broken here, you know, so so let's just keep moving. I'm like, you're right. That, you know, change for change sake's never good. But, you know, always, always looking for things that we can you know, round out those rough edges, smooth it out and keep keep moving forward. So that's, I love it. I look for it. Put me in coach when there's something that needs to get, get done. And uh, I'm going to do my best to very figure it out. I think it really just ties back to, to process, you know, yeah. Hey, I know where I want to get to, but let's, let's start un unpacking all the steps. that's going to get us there. So problems, put me in, send them to me. I I'm all for it. Not to say I'm a, always going to be the problem solver. I've screwed up plenty and I've created plenty of those problems too that I need to phone a friend to come help me with. But I'm not shy of them and I just love jumping in on it. Oh, that is so good. And you know, one of the things for me that I, I have found is a lot of people, a lot of people, when they hear the word problems, they're like, oh, you know, red flag, I glaze over, I'm out of it. This is just going to be too much. But when you come at them with the word opportunity, hey, we've got this opportunity, man, they're like, hey, what can we do? And, and I love where you've taken problems and you're like, you get excited about that. But one of the things you said that really clicked with me is not to make change for change sake, but to really dig into it. And you're not afraid to ask for help. And I think that's a sign of a true leader is not making change for change sake and asking for help and recognizing, you know, use your resources, delegate, you know, find find the right person to empower them to help recognize the opportunity and find the solution. So Richard, man, you're just all around one of those like inspiring leaders that I'm just enjoying this this conversation. It's great. Now we're, we're right at the end of the time. 
And man, I could, I could talk to you for hours, but before we wrap up, I'd love to give you an opportunity to share a closing thought with us. Closing thought. Well, I, I'll, I'll just, hey, I appreciate all you said about me being inspiring. I, I don't know that that's true. And my closing thought is just look around. Those that are around you, love on them, take care of them. They'll take care of you. It's proven true for me. If you can extend yourself to, to help someone out, no matter who that is, I promise it come back to you tenfold at some point in your life. It has for me and, uh, and anyone out there who's maybe watching this, Hey, I'm right there on LinkedIn. You can reach out if I can help you in any way, please do so. And Gary, thanks for having me on. You are, uh, you've, you've heaped the accolades on me, but I think it's truly you who, who deserves those accolades. I've watched a few episodes. Uh, like I said, I'm a fan and I said, man, the people that are on here, I just don't know if I can pull the torch to, but I'm going to do my best to do it. And I just love to uh, get to share this time with you and reconnect. Oh man, thank you so much, Richard. You know, and you hold more than a torch, you hold a bonfire. So thank you for that. I love your, your closing thought. It's appreciation, generosity, and just get in there, stand shoulder to shoulder. Richard, thank you so much for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. And thank you guys for listening. And we will see you on the next episode.